Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today I've got quite a serious video to talk about. Something that I've been wanting to talk about for the past three years but I never thought it was like the right time or the right place or anything like that. But today I feel like it's it's kind of like my turn to speak about my story now. So today is the 22nd of May 2020. Three years ago today, there was a terrorist attack in Manchester Arena at an Ariana Grande concert. Fortunately, I was able to go, but unfortunately, I was also there when this happened. This situation is something that I think about daily. And I think it's now time that I do finally tell exactly what happened in my point of view. So if you do get triggered easily or if you did go and you are watching this, um, this is a trigger warning. This might trigger you and I'm really, really sorry if um, it does. But if you don't want to watch it and you were um, like a victim of this, um, please don't watch it if you feel like it will just upset you. So basically the day started off where I was going with my friend and um, my friend is called Emily and I had been best friends with her for ages. I'm still friends with her now um, and I decided to take her because I thought it was like pretty fun. It was her first ever concert so we were super super excited. I got ready at home and went to her house and um, she got ready and we was taking pictures and we were so so happy. We got the coach there and it was like all fun, everything like that. We then got into the arena and everything was like so good. Like I thought it was like going so amazing. I had been wanting to see Ariana for years. So this was literally my dream come true. I literally love Ariana and being able to see her in person with like my best friend, it was an amazing feeling, like truly really was. But at the time, I was really, really poorly. I had something wrong with my brain. I don't know if I've ever spoke about it. But um, I was, like, really poorly. It made me really, like, dizzy and stuff. But, like, besides the point, I had to sit down for most of it because, like, I couldn't stand up because I could have fainted at any point. Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed it. Emily took her shoes off because she stood up for the whole entire time. Um, so, yeah, she took her shoes off. So we were just having the time of our life we didn't even like think that was going to happen but I kind of did have a feeling and it sounds really strange but I have like these weird like anxiety like feelings and um I had a feeling that something bad was gonna happen but I didn't think it was going to be that um it sounds really strange because people might think like you're only saying that because it happened um but I have these feelings quite a lot and sometimes they're wrong, sometimes they're right. But I had a feeling that it was going to be a terrorist attack but I didn't think it was going to be a bomb. Um, for some reason in my head I kept on picturing shoot, like shooters um, which is kind of weird but I kind of pushed it aside and I was like no that's just your anxiety like working yourself up for no apparent reason at all. Um, so I kind of pushed it aside and I didn't really think about it. Then at the end of the concert, like literally everyone was leaving and Emily was putting her shoes back on. So I waited for her, you know, <laughs> like you would. Um, and there were still people going out the arena at this point and we were still in the arena because like I said, Emily was putting her shoes on. Then the next minute we obviously heard the bomb go off but at that moment in time we didn't know it was a bomb. Then all of a sudden I saw... Oh, hundreds of people screaming and running for their literal lives and I literally picture it all the time now like I find it really really difficult to like speak about it but like I only want to speak about it now because I feel like this could truly help someone be able to speak about out about it um and like I don't want to do this for like any other reason I just want to purely help someone understand or help someone come to the terms with the fact or someone speak out but yeah, I saw a lot of people running and I literally froze. Uh, like, Emily froze and I just looked at Emily and I went, run. I literally said, run to her. But, like, 
we was we had the whole row to ourselves, which was really weird. I don't get it. Like there was literally no one on our row. There was like thirty seats on our row, and we were the only people on it for the whole entire concert, which I thought was really strange. Like we didn't understand it at all. Um. So like we had room to move. Like we had room to run basically. But then when we got to the stairs to go up. Um. You know to to get out. Um, these two girls were like crouching on the stairs. They was like, it's a shooter, it's a shooter. I was like, it's not, it's not. So like, I grabbed them and like I picked them up, literally like I grabbed them and like chucked them up. And I was like, you need to move or you'll get trampled on. Then like her manager came out while we was on the stairs. Um, or we could have been on a row again. I'm getting a bit mixed up actually. Um, and he was saying it's just a balloon. It was just a balloon being popped because the microphones are still on. So like in our head we were like, is it like what is it? Was it a balloon? Was it? A, we were so confused at this point. Like no one knew what was going on at all. Um. So like I grabbed these girls and we went up the stairs and we finally got out and there was an evacuation alarm going on saying please evacuate the building, please evacuate the building, like over and over and over again. And the workers kept on telling me to go the off opposite way of where the actual bomb went off. But I didn't know that way. If I would have gone that way, I wouldn't have known how to get back to the coach or get back anywhere. So I was confused. So I didn't listen to them and I went the other way. I went the, I went towards the bomb. Um, like towards like everything. And I kept on saying to Emily, I was like, it smells horrible. And she was like, I know. Like it literally... I, I cannot describe what it sounded like, the evacuation, like, thing going on and the smell. It was so horrible. So, like, we had to... I me, I chose to walk past that way, but, like, I didn't choose it. It's like I had no other option because if I went the other way, I wouldn't have had a clue what I'm doing. So we had to walk past it. Um, But I just said to Emily, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Like, I kept on saying that to her and we just didn't look at all. And then we went down the stairs... And like, um, I said to mum, like I said to Emily, I said, should I ring my mum? Cause I don't know whether it, it was a bomb. I don't know whether it was a balloon. Like, do I worry her? Cause at this point it was like 11 o'clock at night or, you know, like it between like a 10 or 11. And I was like, oh no, I better ring her because if not, she might think there's something wrong. Um, so I rang my mum and I was like, mum, I'm pretty sure a bomb's just gone off. And she was like, what? I was like, well, they're saying it's a bomb, but they're saying it might not be. She's like, get back to that coach and stay on it until you get home. And I was like, okay, like, I'm going. Like, I wasn't planning on doing anything else. So I did. I just got onto the coach. And then there was, like, these two girls who was crying on the coach. And I said to Emily, I said, do I ask if they're okay? Like, that is literally what I said. I was like, I was like do I ask if they're okay? She was like, um, I don't know. And I was like, oh, right. So I, said, so I said to these girls, I was like, um, are you okay? And she was like, yeah. And then we sat and talked all the way home, like, you know, about it. And was like making sure that they're okay and everything like that. And yeah, so I kind of went home. She went home, the people that we were talking to. And me and Emily just went home as well. My mum was like waiting at the doorstep for us and she like gave us a hug and stuff. And then like as soon as we got in, Emily just burst out crying. And I was like, I literally just don't know what's even going on. Like I literally did not have a clue in my head. Like it wasn't even like matching up. And then after that, I didn't leave my house for days, maybe even weeks. Um, But my mum rang the news and I was putting like an article and then someone messaged me she was like do you remember me from the coach I was like yeah I was like yeah I do actually and then we started talking and we started becoming friends and to this day the girl that I asked if if she was okay on the coach is now my best friend and um, I'll put a picture up here of me and her but three years down the line to this very day she is still my best friend and probably will forever be as well it's super hard like especially after now that I know that you know 22 beautiful lives were taken that night 
like rest in peace to every single one of you and I am sending so much love to everyone friends and family who's you know been affected by this affected by the fact that their loved ones had been taken away from them like I send my love to you so 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 much but soon after that had happened I started I was already doing counselling but I started doing counselling like even more um, so over the past three years I've had three different counsellors about this situation and um, the counsellor that I currently have now she thinks I'm suffering from signs of PTSD she doesn't know obviously whether I have PTSD or not and I don't know either but she said that I've got signs of it so she's gonna help me with that also um, because I find it really really difficult like I've only ever told two people this and now I might be telling, you know, a couple more people. But every single time I leave my house, whether it's to go to the shop, whether it's to go to college, whether it's to go to, you know, anywhere, like anywhere. Especially if I go on public transport, if I go on a train or a bus. In my head, the whole entire time that I'm on that train, whether I'm on that bus, I think about what I'd do if a terrorist attack happened. I ha would have to picture in my head, who would I save? What would I do? Would I do, like I'd, pi I'd do all these different scenarios in my head for the whole time I'm on it. And it's so frustrating because it's just reminding me over and over again that that's what I went through. That's like, m this is not how my brain should work. My brain should not be trying to figure out how I'd survive or how I'd be able to save people like it's it's so hard and I don't think that like, I don't know if anyone else suffers from that like I don't know if it's just me but even if it is just me I kind of like don't even know what to think about it because like I you shouldn't be thinking about like that kind of stuff but I do all the time so six months later I had to go back to the arena to see Little Mix and I was so heartbroken the fact that I had to go back and I cried the whole entire time I was there because I just kept on I just kept on looking up at where it happened and picturing everyone running the whole like running away the whole entire time so it, like it's I don't know how to explain it like it just literally took over my whole entire body and I literally could not control staring at it the whole time. And I was trying to so focus on the concert, but I really couldn't. Then a couple of year, like a year or so later, I then went for the second time to the arena to go and see KSI versus Logan Paul. And I went with Bethany. So that was our first time going together to the concert. Um, went back to the arena together because I had never met Bethany before Ariana. Um, and it was like super hard. I was really, really nervous. And the security guard looked at me and he was like, it's going to be okay. And I was just like, I was so confused at how he noticed that I was nervous. I was like, I was like, I, I, I was at the concert, like with Ariana. And he was like, so was I. And then we literally had like a full on chat about it. Like me and the security person. And I was like. Oh, well, like, he made me feel so comforted for some reason. And, like, I, I don't know. I literally, I didn't even know what was going on. And he was so nice. So, I don't know his name, but thank you for that if you ever watch this. <laughs> then in 2018, before the boxing match, and before I went for the second time, I turned 18. And I was finally able to get a tattoo. So, I do have a tattoo right here. and he, I don't know if you'll be able to see. But it says on it one last time it says the date and then it has her little like logo and then i also have a little b bit hammer ear i don't know if you can see i think it's that ear it could be this one. Oh no yeah definitely behind this one um so I, i've obviously got them tattooed on me for life as well i think about the situation on a daily basis and i could never explain it to someone who kind of wasn't there because I don't think they would be able to understand it all or be able to like 
you know, feel what I feel. The fact is people take in traumas in different ways because this is a trauma, it's a traumatic event. Like this will affect so many people physically and mentally, it definitely will. So the fact is if you are suffering from that night, I'm always here and you can always message me on Instagram or you can always comment down below, I will always respond. But whether or not you've spoke about it or whether you've been keeping it inside, just know that you are never alone and thousands of people feel somewhat the same as you do. A couple weeks ago, I was stood right here, actually, I was stood right here and the window was open and I heard a massive bang. It definitely wasn't the sound that I heard that night, but it's very close to what I heard that night. And my whole body froze. I, and I was in my own house. I knew I was safe. And my whole body froze and I literally burst out crying. I could not breathe. I, I literally had to be like breathing air. I had to be like, t tell myself to breathe because I could not breathe one bit. My whole body just didn't know what to do. Kaylee was looking at me, which is my sister, by the way. She was looking at me. She's like, Ella, I really don't know what to do. I was like, neither do I. I literally, and then I rang Bethany, which is obviously my friend that I met that night. And we was talking and she like calmed me down and she was like, you know, it's okay. It's fine. But that was probably the worst panic attack I've ever had um, surrounding this situation because I do suffer from panic attacks anyway but um I have had a few because of the situation a couple times like I can't stand fireworks really um I have to like know that the fireworks are coming does that make sense it's like if I hear a firework out of the blue it will scare me uh, I went to Florida and they do like a massive firework show and my brother wears his ear defenders and I and like he was like do you want them so I put them on and it made it so much better because I couldn't actually hear what was going on but I could see what was going on like it makes it better and Bethany feels the same way she doesn't like fireworks either so I don't know if other people um think of the, think the same but Maybe it's just me and Bethany, I don't know. Like I said, this is just to purely tell my side of the story about how I felt and how it, it happened in my eyes. Because like, a lot of people will have different stories. It, like, it, different things happened to that night to different people. So this is just my story. Don't think that this is what happened altogether. This is just seeing it from my point of view, not from other people's point of views. So, like I said, I suffer from it now and I'm working on it quite a lot to try and, you know, not forget the situation but to work on it to make it not so, like, so traumatic anymore, if that makes sense. I don't know how to put it into words that isn't kind of, like, insulting. So, that is pretty much my side of the story. I feel like I have probably missed a few things out but... I can't think straight when I'm trying to explain stuff like this. I always think of it afterwards. But like I said earlier in the video, if you have a story that you want to tell and you don't want to tell it publicly yet, you can always, always, always message me. I'm always here to talk to anyone. I really hope this story helped someone out, whether it is 10,000 people or one person. I truly just wanted to do this to show what it was like from someone's point of view while this happened. Like I said, RIP to the 22 beautiful angels that we lost and I'm really sorry to all the family and friends that, you know, had loved ones taken away from you by this horrible, horrible person. I hope this explained my side of the story well. I do chat around a bit, so if some bits don't make sense, don't mind that. That's just me. Um, but yeah, like I said, I really hope this story helps someone. 
open up or understand unfortunately this is the end of today's video i hope you enjoyed is can i even say that this is usually my usually my outro bye everyone until next time